It's every parent's nightmare, losing a child unexpectedly. That is just what happened to the Williams family when eight-year-old Dylan, seen here, was killed after a freak accident during baseball practice. Dylan was covering first base when a ball thrown his way hit him directly in the neck. He immediately went down, never recovered. Sadly, Dylan's father, who coaches that team, saw the accident when it happened. Typical day, we went, went to practice like we always do. Just didn't come home. He was playing first base, and uh, they went to throw a ball to him, and he he wasn't really looking. Um, and to me, it looked like it hit him in like the side of the neck, and he just dropped to the ground. I went to get him up, and he he was just limp. I don't know, <laughs> one in ten million. No sign of. No sign of injury where, where we thought the ball hit him, just cardiac arrest. He is a donor. We decided he was a donor. Um, so people got a huge gift last night from Dylan. Just to all the parents with kids, young, old, give them a hug, Tell kiss them goodnight. Don't ever Take not training. tell them how much I mean to you because they're gone in a, they're gone in a second. That is so heartbreaking. Dylan's parents hope to meet his organ recipients one day to learn what kind of impact their son had on their lives. In Texas, a 12-year-old was pitching another accident here in a little league all-star game and was hit in the head by a line drive, knocking him to the ground. Thankfully, though, Emmett Parsit was okay, but his family says their son still suffers from headaches. He has trouble sleeping now. But Emma's parents are suing Little League Baseball for $1 million alleging negligence. They claim the league has failed in its efforts to ensure player safety. Want to bring back our legal experts, Attorney John Phillips, criminal defense attorneys Tony Miller, Darren Kavanoki. Uh, this is a tough one, and John, I'll start with you on it. My sister has two kids, one is a boy, and I'll tell you, she's afraid, and I know a lot of moms who are, to enroll their son in, let's say, football or something high impact. But this is tough. Who do you blame? Do you blame the baseball league? Or maybe just parents are looking for someone to take the blame, especially in that story we saw with the dad losing his son. Being a personal injury attorney, sometimes it's tough because you, you look at these suits and you might file it. And people are like, oh, you're suing the Little League. You know, you're shutting it down mm -hmm. for the other kids when, you know, when I was fine. And, no, you're trying to regulate and make these, these safer, make sure that the coaches and the, the medical care and everything is on the sidelines mm -hmm. um, because you see it more and more. Girls' soccer, mm -hmm. it's getting more and more involved. Lacrosse is now, there's a southern version of lacrosse that's getting more and more physical, mm -hmm. and you see these head injuries, and they're just they're ruining okay. people's lives. Anything, really, gymnastics. And, Darren, in this particular case, the parents are alleging that the bat was somehow doctored uh, to make the ball go a little bit faster and the, doc uh, the uh, bat is the weapon in this case, if you will. But if every parent sued for every injury in sports, there would be a lawsuit literally every day. Well, but the bat makes all the difference. And, and if we kind of take a step back from this, parents, I believe, have a responsibility to make sure that their kids play in activities that they screen, that they review, because nothing is without risk. Obviously, there have been injuries in baseball, professional baseball down to Little League, so it's not that baseball itself is without risk. But really, the crux of the complaint here is that the Little League failed to take risks.